Good morning people, Titus here for part 9 of the Qbert mini series, and in this video we'll be creating the blueprint for Coily the Snake, one of Qbert's enemies. I'll be using a static mesh and animations that I created in Blender, but the setup will work with any model or animations you have. Alright, let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Alright, so I think starting off we're going to come to my Blender folder, create a new folder, I'm just going to call it Snake. And then I'm going to import my static mesh, make sure my animations are checked, and then import all. There we go. I'm going to come to my anim folder, right click, go to animation, animation blueprint, choose my coily the snake skeleton, call it abp underscore snake, open that up, and we're going to do very similar to what we did with Qbert. So starting off, I need a state machine. And the state machine is just going to have one animation, so I'm just going to call it idle. Normally I'd call this locomotion, but uh, I'm also going to create a default slot uh, because I am probably going to use an animation montage as well. So if you plan on using a state machine with animation montages, make sure you have a default slot so it has a way to play them, otherwise it won't work. Uh, I'm then going to go into my uh, state machine and I have a few different idle animations but this time I'm going to be simple. Just drag out one, hook this up here and then because I just have the one I'm going to select it and choose loop animation and then compile and that looks pretty good right there. Now with my animation blueprint created I'm going to come back into Blender, go into my snake folder find my jump, right click, create, and then create anim montage. I'll call it am underscore snake jump. And then I'm going to move it to my anim folder so it's easier to find. Uh, then I'm also going to go to the materials folder, right click, actually sorry, we have an emission base so I'm going to right click on that uh, and create a material instance and I'm gonna create one for the snake's eyes and maybe his tongue. Um, and I'm gonna do like a deep red, something like that-ish. And then I'm gonna bump the power to be like 100. So it looks very menacing. All right, and then I'm gonna to come to my blueprints folder, right click, blueprint class, uh, I'm going to use the character um, template just because it comes with the um, the movement script, which also has gravity. So we'll be using gravity on this character. I'll choose BP underscore. Oops, auto saved on me. And we'll call it Snake. Open that up here. Select the character mesh. I'm going to choose the snake. Compile. Then I have access to the materials uh, for the eye color. I'm going to do mi underscore eyes. That way I think that looks a little bit more menacing. Uh, it's a bit big, so I'm going to scale it down in all access to about 0.3. And I think the capsule is a bit big. Um, so the capsule half height, I am maybe going to try 60 and then maybe 30. I think that looks somewhat better. Uh, I'm going to come to top view, select the static mesh. I'm going to do increments of five. I'm going to see if I can center it a little bit better with the snake's body. Maybe right about there. And then I'm going to come to the right view, bring the snake so his tail touches the ground. Bring that into perspective and that looks pretty okay. Now I can come to the anim class and choose the snake animation blueprint and now he has a little bit more um, I guess life so to say. Now starting off in the event graph um, we're not going to be working with tick. We are going to set him up exactly like we set up Qbert so there's just going to be a slight difference. We're, we're basically going to uh, create that 
up, down, left, right movement code. But the way we're gonna drive the logic is we're just gonna maybe every one second or every one and a half seconds, we'll run a, a function to generate a random number. And that random number can be anything between one and four. And then based on that random number it assigns, we can go left, right, up or down. So it'll just kind of be random movement, um, just as a simple movement script. So uh, we're gonna need some variables for this though. Uh, the first one's pretty obvious. We'll do a um, is moving or is attacking Boolean check. Uh, and then because we're setting this up like Qbert, if you remember that, we had a current location, which was a vector. And then we had a forward location, which was also a vector. And then to make this random, we're going to need a random integer. So I'll just choose random, call it integer. And then I'm going to assign a random value of one because our random values are going to be between one and four. So one, two, three, or four, just to make it simple. Um, and then the code's pretty straightforward. I think on the begin play, we'll need to delay like we did with Qbert, just to make sure that the thing has enough time to fall to the cube because we're usually your, you know, your spawn, we might have to increase this too because we're going to be spawning him up in the air and then he's going to fall down. Um, so we'll probably be adjusting this value, but one second starting off is pretty good. Uh, and then for the current location, we'll do a alt drag out to set it. And then we can just get the capsule component because remember everything lives in the capsule component. Everything's a child of the capsule component. So we can get the capsule components um, relative location. Oops. And then with that, we can plug that right into our current location variable starting off. And then after that, we'll want to do set timer by function name. Let's run this function every one and a half seconds on a loop. And then we're gonna right click and promote this function to a variable. We'll call it the movement reference. Now let's actually create this function. So let's go to our functions, hit the plus sign, call it movement. And before we forget, the function name is gonna be whatever you name the function. So in this case, movement. Uh, the function's gonna be very simple. We're just going to grab is attacking into a not boolean. And then we'll come into a branch. So when, fun when the function runs, make sure that we're not already attacking. And if we are not attacking, let's go ahead and attack. So let's create that code real quick. So we'll do a custom event called um, attack jump or whatever you want to name it. And then in the movement code, we can call, oops, I better compile first, attack jump. Now normally before this, I would probably uh, drag out random and then do an assign on random and pull off of it into a random integer uh, in range. And the range we're gonna use is between one and four. The reason I wanna do it after the attack function is because I wanna control the first one so we can, we can assign um, the variable. Like right now we assign it as one. Uh, the only reason I'm doing it this way is basically in case I mess up, this gives, the, this gives me the ability to manually assign one, two, three, or four, just so I can make sure that the snake jumps in the right direction and is rotated correctly. But it wouldn't be bad if you were to set this before the attack jump. So either way. Um, but yeah, so we'll compile, save that there. And then that pretty much completes the begin play. Now the overlap code is also gonna be pretty straightforward, right? We're obviously gonna do a cast of Qbert. Oops. So if we are interacting with Qbert, we're probably gonna to wanna to check if Qbert is dead. And if you remember, Qbert has a variable called is dead. 
and we don't want to attack Qbert if he's already dead. So we would come into a not boolean again. Drag out here into a branch. Drag this into here. And then we can come into a get all actors with interface. And then we'll set the interface in a second, but we can do a for each loop. And then we're gonna call the uh, player death, which is the same function that runs when Kubert jumps off the edge too. Now, let's go back into our um, level here. We created the interface called player death. That's kind of a bad name. Um, I kind of want to just call it death. Uh, the reason being is because we're going to have player death and in a later video, we're going to create a snake death. Because we're going to create multiple functions um, in here and we're going to call a different function depending on which thing is dying. So I think death is a more appropriate name and then we'll just do it on the function names is different. So. Uh, make sure on the interface we use that BPI def, and then it'll go through and basically trigger uh, the code that we want it to. Uh, and that should complete the begin overlap. I think there's an issue with Qbert, but we'll come to that in a second. So we'll compile and save this. Uh, the movement code's kind of intense, so we'll find a nice big empty spot here. Um, the way we're going to do it is we're going to come into three branches and we're going to need our random value. So we'll do a control grab and we'll do equal equal and we're going to check if it's equal to one and then we're going to check if it's equal to two and then we're going to check if it's equal to three. And that should give us all our permutations that it could possibly be. And then we'll hook this up like so. And let's see if I can organize this a little bit better. Maybe something like this. Yeah, I guess that kind of works. All right, so now remember how we handle the movement. We do a rotation and then we play an animation and then we use a timeline to lerp um, between two values. Uh, so we're still going to do that same thing. So we can get a, our capsule component. We can drag off this into a set world rotation. We're going to split the rotation because we're only uh, rotating the z-axis and then essentially we need to do this four times right so we'll do control D and then control D and control D again now I need to line this up a little bit better I'm gonna bring this over here like so All right, I think this will work just fine. All right, so that'll be true, that'll be false. Actually, I am sorry, uh, we need one other thing here. The first thing we wanna do before we rotate is we wanna set the is attacking to true. So we'll control D to duplicate that out on each of the outcomes here. And then let's hook up these execution pins, like so. All right, so we're setting the attack as true. We're gonna be rotating the character. Uh, after we rotate the character, we wanna play a montage so we can get our mesh. And then we can play montage. And then we only have uh, one montage for the snake. 
That's the snake jump. I think the defaults will be fine. And I'm just going to duplicate these two nodes for all our various permutations for this one as well. All right, looks good. Now, after we rotate the character, we play the jump animation, we then need to set the uh, forward location where you know the snake's gonna jump to. So we'll do Alt, drag into that. And the way we're gonna do that is we're going to get the current location. And we're going to add some value. And then we're gonna plug that into here, like so. And we're gonna do that across all three permutations. So we'll control D this out. Just to duplicate these nodes across each one. Like so. Uh, we're then uh, gonna come into a delay. And the delay is to give, the only reason I'm using this delay is because my animation is a little bit too quick uh, for the timeline. So I need to give a little bit of room for the snake to compress um, before the actual jump happens. And then we'll come into a timeline. And the timeline length is going to be 0.3. We'll add a float track called alpha with two keyframes. This will be at 0, 0. And this one is going to be at 0.3 and 1. So your timeline should look something like this. And we want to actually play from the start. Now, after that, you're basically gonna drag in the capsule component, do a set world location, and then you're gonna use the current location and the forward location, drag into a lerp vector, and then your alpha is gonna come from your timeline. And then your return value is gonna go into your world location. Your update function is gonna go into there. And then on finished, you'll come into a delay. Delay just a half second. And then you just wanna set the current location to the new forward location. The way we can do that is just simply grabbing the capsule component getting the relative location. And of course you do this after about a half second delay. So it gives the snake enough time to move into position. And then we want to set the is attacking back to false, which will allow the snake to jump again. So that's the basics of the code. Um, the only thing we need to do now is just set up the, uh, the rotations. So for this one, uh, the top one is gonna be, I have these all written out, so it'll be a little bit easier. This one's gonna be 180. Second one's gonna be zero. Third one is 90 degrees. And the last one is 270. Now for the bottom one, we're going to be moving on the x-axis 100. And this is a downward jump, so the z only needs to adjust 100 units. For the one right above that, that's going to be negative 100. And this one's an up jump, so you need 150 units of height. And on the third one up, we're going to be moving on the y-axis 100 degrees, or 100 units. And then the Z is only gonna be 100 because it's a downward jump. And this one's gonna be negative 100 on the Y. 
and this was an up jump, so it's gonna be 150, you need the extra height. All right, so now we can check our code. And see if we got everything here. Let's come into the level. We'll add the snake somewhere. Come to top view. You do want to line them up uh, pretty evenly if you can. So now if we play, you can see, well, he jumped off the edge, so that didn't really help us too much, but it looks like he does move around randomly, and that's working pretty good. He jumped off the edge again, but there's still some bugs with him. Uh, his overlap isn't going to work because his capsule or his collision settings aren't set up correctly. Um, so there's a few issues that we'll have to tackle, but uh, I think uh, I think that's good for now. So, all right, people, we'll cut it here because this video is getting a bit long. But yeah, in the next one, we'll work on setting up the collision code uh, so we can give Coily the snake a way to actually kill Qbert. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and see you on the next one.